Good day, everyone. Um, well, <clears throat> we're in a chop suey city here um, after the market's attempting a, a very sloppy bounce. Um, the 200-day uh, uh, average is still a bit of a distance from where the averages are at, um, and you know maybe they want to uh, try to move move into it. I mean, the S&P actually looks looks like it's only um, a little ways off, but uh, the Nasdaq, on the other hand. Um, has a few days if it's gonna if it's gonna try to make a run for this uh, 200 day. Therefore, um, one second. I gotta what a second. Okay, that was the bell. Um, anyway, uh, we've got uh, the averages that are slopping around. Um, as we've said, to expect um, elevated levels of volatility. That's pretty common uh, if you look back over the last few years with the QE environment. When the market has a big correction, it tends to chop around. It did that in 2010 after the flash crash. Uh, it retested lows. Um, it also retested lows in 2011 after the, uh, the issues in Greece um, and their, their debt problems. Um, so I guess the question is, well, are we going to retest lows that were set uh, in August? Um, who knows? Uh, you know, we could get an October of 2014 where um, the market just zoomed in new highs. Um, <laughs> But uh, as we all know, the market likes to rhyme. It doesn't repeat. And uh, we just have to watch um, in earnest uh, the price volume action and the action of leading stocks and what they're telling us. Uh, a lot of these leaders look shell-shocked. Um, they're very sloppy patterns off their lows. Um, and that goes along with the uh, heightened levels of volatility we're seeing in the markets. Um, at the same time, uh, the Fed is going to be meeting next week. Uh, they conclude on Thursday, and um, the F CME futures are saying that there's only about a 25, 26% chance that they're going to hike. Um, most likely they won't. There's too many issues in other parts of the world um, that uh, the global economy is uh, nearing recessionary levels again, and uh, I don't think the Fed wants to create uh, upset the apple cart um, because markets do correlate. So. You know, we see over in China that uh, you know they're they, they're having a, a slowdown. Um, they're exerting much less demand on commodities, which is why Goldman Sachs came out with a report saying that uh, oil could go all the way down to twenty dollars um, because of the Chinese issue. But that's also you know the issues from other countries who are also exerting less demand on commodities. Um, it's it's a real tough uh, time for the for the world um, right now. So um, right now, you know, the main uh, uh, issue is. What will the uh, markets do going forward? Um, right now, because the market is very choppy and sloppy, it's going to um, the market direction model remains in cash for now. Uh, the volatility model, model, on the other hand, is taking advantage of this this volatility, and hopefully, to the, the signal um, today's uh, sell signal is going to pan out. We'll see. Um, it likes volatile times. Uh, it likes when uh, the QE effect is. Uh, diminished and so perhaps QE is going to remain diminished for now and so hopefully it can take advantage of this uh, this chop suey uh, in, environment. Um, and other than that, uh, you know, like um, I'll leave it to Gil to discuss a lot of the short sale setups uh, as I guess they start to start to pan out, um, especially um, in this in this in choppy environment with a lot of the broken patterns. Um, there is going to be opportunity, um, and there's always opportunity, as, as we like to say there. You just have to keep your eye, um, eye on the ball um, and uh, not to throw it in the towel when things uh, look as uh, difficult as they sometimes can look, especially this year. And with that, I'll turn it over to Gil. <clears throat> yeah, I think you're still in a choppy phase, and it's uncertain as to where the market's going. If you look at the NASDAQ chart here, uh, we can see if you draw a line across the top of the peaks and along these lows here, you see we're in a sort of ascending wedge kind of formation like we talked about in this morning's uh, uh, market lab report. And I think if you, you had a big volume breach at the lows of this uptrend line here, that might be a very bearish development. The flip side is you could just continue drifting higher in this ascending wedge up to the 200-day moving average, which to me would seem logical. Uh, a couple of things I noticed just – outside observations in terms of uh, the short sale game is that there are a huge number of names on my short sale list and I, I got to say every it seems like every stock in the market could be a candidate and if you look at any number of names like yesterday somebody was mentioning to me um, NetEase could go on your and yeah that you know that's breaking down maybe this is a head 
and your right left shoulder here and a head and this is the breakdown here to define the right side of the head maybe you're going to flop around in here so that looks pretty ugly i mean you look at uh even this uh, acuity brands which was one of the last remaining leaders hanging in there broke down over the last couple of days and so you're seeing stocks you know just more and more stocks looking ugly and and, and as my list gets longer i i measure the number of names on my buy list versus the number of names on my watch list. I think I have like 20 names on my buy list, and some of those are even questionable, whereas I've got a huge number of names on my short selling list, which tells me that, you know, maybe uh, we're a little bit long in the tooth here. So we've been looking at these possibilities for the market. Let's go look at a NASDAQ chart on my HS Investor software, and I'm going to blow this up. If we go back... <clears throat> Oh, don't go to sleep on me now. What is this thing doing? There we go. If we go back to 2010, which has been the first um, uh, thing we've been looking at because based on the flash crash, which is similar to what, what I call Capitulation Monday, which occurred oh, not quite three weeks ago, but three Mondays ago. And back then you had the break, you had the rally up to the 50 day and immediately broke down. Okay, now we're, we're in a slightly different position. So if we're looking for this, it really hasn't happened yet. So, you know, we're looking for that. If we go back to 2007, uh, when the market topped, you know what, I'm looking at the S&P here. I want to look at the NASDAQ. Here we go. I hate that uh, silly little blue circle that they have now. So we'll go back to 2007 here. Uh, there's a break in 2008. So market topped and it actually topped earlier but if you're looking uh, this one did this again on me. I know what's happening here. Let me get this straightened out. <laughs> Technical difficulties otherwise known as I can't get the right index up there at the right time. Here we go. Okay, here's the break off the peak. So you broke down here and then you just chopped sideways for a period of time. So are we looking at a, at a situation where the market having broken down off the peak is going to go sideways for a while and everybody's going to want to get short here and long here and short here and you're just going to chop back and forth and that's the other possibility. Now if we go back to 2000 As we move through the Wayback Machine here, you can see the break off the peak in 2000 had one, one big drop and then one rally and then kaboom. So that's similar to 2010 as well. So, I mean, is this what we're going to see? But the, the thing is, I, it seems too obvious to me that we're just going to roll over here. So, and, and given the number of names that have broken down and how many people suddenly want to get short when nobody was really all that interested in the short side, uh, back, you know, over a month ago, and all, all of a sudden everybody's interested in the short side and everything's a short. Uh, it makes me think they're going to wring some of this uh, shorting, you know, excitement, sentiment, whatever you want to call it, out of the market before uh, you move lower, assuming you do move lower. So it wouldn't surprise me to see the NASDAQ push up towards the 200-day moving average, which is a possibility. Uh, and this might coincide with the S&P moving higher. But so far, all you're doing is in, in this sort of, you got an ascending wedge on the NASDAQ, and then you have on the S&P just kind of a, a sideways consolidation. And it's not clear whether this is portending a, a move lower or whether we're just going to try and drift around and move higher. You do you see, see a black cross right here where the 50-day drops below the 200. Everybody's talking about that. My experience with that is, as far as the indexes go, sometimes I can just tell you you're at a, you're at a bottom. So it's not really clear there either. So I, you can't really draw any hard conclusions uh, regarding the, the market's uh, next move. I think it, what it all boils down to is what the stocks are doing. And so I'm going to cruise through my list here. I did think it was... Think it was yeah, there was, there, there's a lot of... Um... There's a lot of uh, black crosses that have been formed over the yeah. last few years, and they, you know, in a QE environment, um, those black crosses were pretty close to the lows of the market. Yeah, and so I don't think you can assume anything, and, and, and it's just interesting that what happens, and I just noticed this, and it's one of the advantages of having a couple of websites, and you see the emails coming in and what people want to ask you about, 
is that when the mar after the market breaks down, everybody gets excited about the short side. And I find that interesting because I'll, I'll, I'll beat the drum constantly that on the short side you have to anticipate, not react. And uh, on capitulation Monday, uh, you know, two, nearly three weeks ago, three Mondays ago to be precise, uh, that was the time to be covering your shorts. And then I've been testing the shorts. I made a little extra money. I'm going to say another 3% or so since then. But it's been difficult. And even when I'm right, I don't really uh, catch it. Like the other day, uh, Mobileye, I thought was a short. I went short it a couple days ago. It had rallied into the 10-day, 20-day line here. And then it just blew apart. And, th and that's you know, just proof I'd rather be lucky than good. You're undercutting this low here. Um, I'm kind of laughing because I remember some guy, uh, I was on a radio interview, and the guy on the radio interview was talking about how he would buy Mobileye, because he's a fundamental guy, and he would buy Mobileye at the 200-day. I guess that worked out briefly, but I hope he sold it, because it's now broken well below the 200-day. And I, I covered at the 200-day, or under it yesterday, and it's just going lower. So, tough problem to have, I suppose. Uh, and then N NXPI was another one, and it's it reversed here. There's the black cross. You see it. It reversed at the 200-day the other day uh, on uh, <clears throat> Wednesday. So it was shortable right around there. And people ask, well, how do you short that when it goes past the moving average? I'll tell you what I look for frequently. I actually start salivating when I see a short sale target stock moving past the moving average on the upside because, number one, it's faking everyone out who's looking for the moving average to be uh, – a point of resistance because I've talked about this many times and in the new book talk about it as well that moving averages are fuzzy zones and stocks can move anywhere from three to five percent past those and still be in a downtrend so whenever I see that I'm seeing a stock get a couple three four five percent past the moving average I'm watching my 620 chart and looking for a reversal because a lot of times that'll be one of your better 620 sell signals on an intraday basis and a lot of times that'll work out pretty well in this case that worked pretty well uh, and but it's just you know all it's doing is coming down into this rising uh, trend channel coming into the lower part of it so to me it's a cover there and then you see where it goes from there so you know the the fat part the sweet spot whatever you want to call it of the short selling game occurred in August and it culminated with capitulation Monday and so if you're playing the short side and you're all excited and you think you're gonna make a ton of money and you're looking for whatever evidence you can find because we know I think one of the first things I learned in my Stanford 101 psychology class is that people will tend to find confirming evidence that uh, for their own theories or thoughts or beliefs. So if you believe the market's going lower, all you're going to look at is confirming evidence of that. And I think that's the one thing as a short seller, you need to check yourself on that and make sure that you're not just seeking confirming evidence. Usually what I'm trying to do, especially after you had a uh, capitulation day like we did, few weeks ago uh, at the end of August, I'm looking for disconfirming evidence and I'm looking harder for that than anything else because I want to know where am I wrong here because I know that once you have that kind of a breakdown and everybody just runs for cover and, and sells, the chances of it going lower eh, to tend to diminish uh, over time. So if it doesn't break down and roll over very quickly like we saw in 2010 and we also saw in March of 2001, then the chances of it going sideways grow. And I think that's what you're looking at right now. So I think you got to play it cool and try to anticipate the next big break to the downside if indeed that's what we're going to see going forward. And so I think while you can get away with the trades uh, trades on the short side for short-term moves, uh, you know, Mobileye might be a little better than that. But, you know, some of these coming in, um, if you look at uh, Skyworks, that's shortable at the 200 day, but all you're getting is a little move. And you notice how... You're kind of getting this little reverse head and shoulders type thing, but also a low and then a Wyckoffian retest, okay, where the volume is not so heavy. And so you could look at this as constructive, okay? You don't have to look at this and say, oh, this is ready to roll over. It may roll over, but it's also in a position where it could go higher. I'm not sure, but I think from the old Wyckoff books, once you have this sort of a, uh, he would call this a spring, I think, and then a, if it went tight sideways, a springboard. I'm not sure you can go check on that uh, if you have any of the old Wyckoff books. But th that may be what's going on here. And if you don't see any volume picking up on the downside, then it may be ready to try and at least move up somewhere up into the 50-day, uh, maybe even higher. Maybe it completely turns around and, and goes off to new highs. You don't know. 
And we talk about that in our second book, Dealing with Uncertainty in the Market. So I find people asking me questions all the time, you know, like, are, are you holding your shorts overnight? It's, well, what if I am? Does that mean you're going to hold all of yours? And people want some sort of uh, definitive answer about things that they, that they can simply follow without thinking at all and not engaging their brain whatsoever and, and just kind of following some sort of a concrete uh, black or white sort of view of the market. But I think you have to remain open to all possibilities here. And in that, in that vein, I'm, I look around for things that might be setting up. Um, we can see Palo Alto Networks. Uh, that's a bottom fishing pocket pivot coming up to the 50-day. It's kind of fluttering around today. I'm actually using this weakness to buy some to see if it works. Then uh, it may try and truck higher. So if we go back to uh, 2007, when the market topped in October of 2007, big leaders like uh, Apple continued higher. I think First Solar also continued higher. That was a big leader. So it wouldn't surprise me to see uh, Facebook continue higher and maybe make another run at the highs. This looks also like a white coffee and sort of spring and then a retest. And now you're holding tight. And I noticed yesterday, I was actually short the stock yesterday. It was coming in. And as it was coming in, there was really no volume selling. So I covered and the thing turned around and went higher. And uh, now I might even look at uh, being long the stock here. But you are rallying up into what I would call the soft underbelly of this base here. So you're coming up in here. And uh, so I use the term soft because uh, it could just easily push right through it. So... If it was a hard six-pack abs underbelly, that might be a different situation. But we have seen uh, in this market this situation where you get the uh, the big 50-day uh, moving average violation fake out, which is what this was right here. This is a 50-day moving average violation because you close below the line here, and then you move below the low of this day, which is the first uh, close below the line on this day, and that's your and that's the bottom. And now you turn around, you go back up. Now you've regained. Uh, the 20-day line, you're fluttering along the 50-day line, and it wouldn't surprise me to see this thing push higher. So if I'm trying to short it, I'm probably not going to be that aggressive, and I'm leaning towards the idea that this thing is going to push me. And if I get any sense that it is, I'll just cover any short position I might be testing. So it's a pretty straightforward way of handling it. But you, you're just kind of in a situation where if you're too bearish, you might get too aggressive and just end up getting, uh, they're just going to chip away at you and you're not, you're, you know, you're going to lose money thinking you're going to score like everybody did here if you were short before all of this madness happened at the end of August. So I think you have to keep that in perspective here and be very uh, shrewd. And, and self-aware and aware of the overall sentiment. You know, uh, I have enough experience on the short side to know that when I've just made a pile of money on a big market break, you know, and making money being short stocks like Apple and whatnot, um, most of the time I don't see that happen right away. It may take some time. So I'm willing to give the market some time here without trying to force the issue. But at the same time, if I do see something that looks weak or is acting weak on an intraday basis, I might come and test it on the short side. But I'm going to use a very, very, very tight stop. Okay? And that's basically where you are in terms of the overall market. So we can see with Apple, you have the same sort of concept of a big low. And you have to consider that at least short term a washout low. So are the, the odds that all these sellers are going to come back and just slam the market again and then send this thing lower is that is that going to happen unless something really bad happens uh, probably not so on that basis we might say this is a sort of a tight little area and maybe it's setting up to go higher it's sitting along the 20 day and the 10 day you could get a uh, pocket pivot of some sorts it's coming from a position underneath the, the big moving average is a 50 day and the 200 day but you still could get it and, and I certainly wouldn't stand in the way of that because it could simply mean the stock needs to rally up to the 50 day moving average so and all of this is simply action that could also on a macro level simply be telling you that um, you know we're, we're eventually going to roll over again but you're getting these rallies that push up higher in the pattern and that's normal so if you read the new book, we've got, I don't know, how many examples, 90 examples, 100, I forget. But there's a bunch of examples. You can see how this all works. But you have to accept the fact that there's a lot of uncertainty uh, in the market at any given time. So you never know anything 
for certain, and you have to deal with that. And you have to be careful that you're not getting into, as someone points out, uh, the con concept of confirmation bias. In other words, looking simply and solely at confirming evidence for a bearish theory. So, so check yourself. If, if you feel like you're leaning one way, start looking around and, and seeing, you know, where could you be wrong? So, so right now, you know, I look at something like this. If we started to see more of this, so you, and you can see how Palo Alto Networks did the same white coffee and sort of uh, retest here. Volume wasn't all that heavy; it was hanging out, and then it came up, and now it's moved higher. You could see stocks like. Uh, Facebook perhaps do that. You can see Apple do that. Maybe Netflix comes back. Although this is looking like a uh, fractal head and shoulders. You can see it here. Uh, but a rally up into the 50-day would be a better spot to short the stock than here, which is along the neckline of this little fractal head and shoulders. It's kind of a fuzzy neckline. It's not really that clear to me. Uh, so, you know, another rally to the 50-day could be forthcoming. And, and if you saw these types of moves in these big stock NASDAQ names, that could easily drive the index up to the 200-day moving average. So that's within the realm of possibilities. Um, we looked at this. We looked at NXPI. We looked at Mobileye. Kind of ticked. I covered my short yesterday. But, hey, like I said, it's a tough problem to have. Uh, you look at Tesla, same sort of situation. And it's had, uh, let's see, if we look at this one, two, well, let's say one, two ways off the, one, two, three, maybe three ways off the top here. I don't know, four, depending on how you want to count them. But it may be washed out. Notice how it's pulling into the 20-day moving average uh, today on light volume, lighter volume. I'm not sure what the, let's take a look at this. Yeah, 31% below average. So it, it could be primed to move higher, so. Let's see, um, Twitter, same situation here. Give me one second here. <clears throat> How about this one? Um, Planet Fitness, PLNT. It's a recent IPO. Nobody likes it, though. If you go on Seeking Alpha, nobody likes it at all. And they talk about how it's a competitive industry and anybody can create a fitness center, and that's pretty much true. But a lot of times, I, you know, like I remember uh, Google, for example, when it came public in 2004. It was around, around this time, actually, in 2004. And I bought the stock around 108, 111, and uh, it was up around 130. And a lot of people were, were downgrading or talking about how anybody can do search. So that was a few hundred points ago. Uh, maybe the same situation here. Maybe, And it's at the lows of the base here or, or this sort of uh, little flag formation, forming a little cup maybe. Maybe it's going to turn. It's got that IPO U-turn look. I don't know. We'll see. But it's a little bit thin, so... Uh, another one, yeah, S some of these point out, SKX, another one hitting my screens is holding tight, but it's it's kind of drifting below the 50-day. So if you look at uh, A Biomed, that's doing a similar sort of thing. N not clear to me. You know, I thought uh, this might be a good one earlier, holding along, you know, as it got back below the 50-day, but it's busted. So now that's looking like a head and shoulders, right? So that's acuity. Um, there's EPAM is one that's trying to come back. But look at the volatility in this thing. It's nutty. Uh, headwater. Somebody buying these guys out. I notice it's real tight in here. It's a thinner stock, so I'm not sure what happened here. Whoops. There we go. Something happened to my volume. Um... <laughs> There we go. This is the old man's uh, data window here for the chart. So anyways, this one's holding tight. You can see here. Looks kind of interesting. Uh, any others people have? Uh, somebody says, HW tied to concrete industry doing well. Same as Mar Martin Mariotta. Yeah, that's interesting. That's another one I'm looking at here, and it's holding up. So 
you know, maybe these are areas uh, where you can make some money, but we'll, we'll see. It's it's dicey there on the long side. Now, if we go back to some of these short ideas and where they're at, um, you know, Starbucks uh, was a good short here, but it, it may be doing this thing where it's setting up here to go higher. Uh, CyberArk, way down there, that's kind of out, out, of, out of play now. We looked at P, PNW, I think that looks okay. I think it's going higher, frankly. Uh, Intel got above the 50-day and it's holding. Okay, that, that which I think is interesting. I was shorting in here. I would get a, I got a little bit of play in here and in here, uh, shorting it on an intraday basis using the 620 chart, but n not not very much. I mean, nothing significant. Uh, BMW VMware is is kind of flagging underneath this area, but you know, nothing there either. CRM is back up uh, off of the 200 day retesting. See how you have the low here and then the retest on lighter volume. So it's hard to say what, this thing's going to roll over. Uh, immediately, and uh, you, you can't really draw any firm conclusions on a lot of these. All I know for sure is that I've had some pretty good moves on the downside. You see Splunk, that was a short up here. Uh, could have been shorted again around the 200-day. See there, here's the example again of this um, stock going through the 200-day uh, moving average on an intraday basis, and, and whenever I see that, I'm always looking for the 620 sell because I've noticed when that happens, that's usually your best shot. Notice also it rallies right up into the underside of this uh, sort of bearish flag here. So, you know, so you have to think a little bit when you're seeing these things in real time. Uh, Workday is kind of sitting in a bear flag. It looks like it wants to go lower, but I would love to see a rally to the 20 day as a short sale opportunity. We already looked at that. Avago is holding the 50 day. And uh, there's a five-day pocket pivot here. I don't know if that's all that significant. But again, you have a break, a, a rally to the 50-day now retest, and you sort of run out of volume on the retest of the retest here. So, you know, the, the argument here that the stock seems to be making to me, and, and most of these are, is that in the short term, they have created these sort of Wyckoffian type lows. They're holding tight. The potential for them to move higher from here is at least as good as the potential for them to uh, move lower. So, you know, all that's to say is I'm not salivating on the short side here. I'm sort of neutral. And, uh, well, I've been able to make some money after the capitulation Monday breakdown. Uh, I'm not really looking to make a lot just yet because you're not really getting that sort of softness that you're looking for on the rollover. Um, Isle, Isle of Caprice uh, Casinos, right? Yeah, um, that's one acting well, surprisingly. And you can see the shakeout and then sort of a, a breakout pulling into the 10-day line as volume dries up. So that that's looking uh, decent. It's a thin stock, though, so, you know, not something I'd really want to play. Um, I like the Palo Alto Networks. Maybe Facebook heads back to the 100, 100 uh, level, a la Al Apple in 2007. So Amazon is also another one. Somebody complain that one. That's also on my list. Uh, and it's holding up, you know, this, this thing is up in this base, nice shakeout here. That's just a big shakeout on the weekly chart and big supporting week, and now you're hanging out. It looks like it wants to go higher. So, you know, you're seeing a few of these, and I would say if you start seeing more of them, and that may take a little bit of time, then the follow-through day, which to me is still a, a fake follow-through day because there's really nothing to buy, uh, could develop into something better, but you don't really need to know that there was or wasn't a follow through day. You just have to watch the stocks because they're going to tell you everything you know. And operating on some basis of, of uh, green light, red light, if anybody remembers the old Engineer Bill show, now I'm dating myself, but I remember as a little kid watching it and you'd drink your milk and he'd be green light and you'd drink your milk and then you'd red light and you'd stop drinking your milk. So, uh, market's not really. Uh, in that sort of phase right now. Anyways, Lulu is a total bust. Why would you be asking about it? I mean, that's a bust. If you shorted it up here, you're doing well, but you know, are you going to make a ton of money shorting it here? I don't know. It might, it may rally back up. It's definitely not a position to short. So, see, market's coming back. You see the Dow off 13 now. Um, some of you saw Facebook coming back a little. Apple isn't really down much at all. Um, Let's see, so 
you can see there's you know things are kind of uh, in positions where they could work out either way and and even if they're shortable they may just push up further in the patterns putting them in a different position to short later on and I think like uh, Dr. K was talking about maybe October uh, it turns out to be the month where we roll over again and we see more weakness in the market I would say uh, that the Fed probably does nothing what's your call on the Fed next week Dr. K yeah, I don't think they're going to do anything. I mean, you know, Yellen's a, a notorious dove, and I just would be very surprised to see them take action, you know, after all this time. Um, futures are even putting uh, the odds of a rate hike, I think, at under, it's still less than 50% by January and February. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be a while before they actually hike. Yeah, and, and I, you know, a lot of people say, well, QE, the Fed, the Fed stopped the QE program, blah, blah, blah. But there, there's a few things that I would point out. The first being that a lot of that liquidity is still sloshing around in the system, and I think that's what contributes to some of the nutty volatility in the market. But you also have the Chinese are printing, and the uh, Europeans are still printing. Draghi was on TV last week, I think it was, talking about how, uh, you know, it's print, 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 baby, and that's what they're going to do. And so you still have, on a global basis, a lot of, liquidity coming into the system which is going to distort things and create a lot of volatility so you know let me throw out some possibilities such as okay the break we saw three Mondays ago on capitulation Monday was a function of this nutty volatility and QE and now we may see some sort of equally nutty move to the upside uh, based on the idea that there is all this liquidity you know Al goes to the left Al goes to the right. Anybody remember that old high school cheer? Stand up, sit down, fight, fight, fight. And that's what they're doing all, all day long. Uh, and that may be what you get, you know. So personally, I'm grateful for having gotten a nice ride on the short side in August. And, uh, you know, bulls make money, bears make money, pigs get turned into bacon. Um, and that's the way it goes. So I think... Uh, we're sitting around looking to see where this thing goes. In the meantime, I may take some shots on the long side. I may take some shots on the short side because when you get into this sort of choppy, sloppy phase, the market takes more uh, takes on more of a bifurcated nature where you'll see setups on both sides of the market that are playable without having to be uh, locked into a rigid, bullish, or bearish view of the market. So. Anyways, somebody says, if earnings are crappy in October, it could be a catalyst for pushed in, I suppose, but that's just speculation. Uh, I know a lot of people want to do big things about what earnings might do, what this or that might do, and I think to some extent that's helpful, but I wouldn't get bogged down in it. Just watch what the market's doing and also uh, keep in mind where you are in the context of where you've been, you know. Uh, like I said, you have the big break, you have the capitulation low. Are we in a position where we're just going to come apart? If we do, then you know we got some serious problems um, on the global scale, and that that you know could cause a meltdown. So I think whatever you're doing, you want to be nimble, and you don't want to be getting too static and rigid in uh, whatever it is you're doing. So um, let's see, any more awesome questions? Shall I continue going through my short list? Let's see. What do, what do we have? Some of these. I think I already looked at these. I don't know what they're doing down here. Let's see. Uh, Corvo. That's just kind of hanging out. Same thing. It's kind of. It's a little weaker though. Uh, this one is also uh, Seagate. It's also looking weak. You see, it's in a. Came down from a head and shoulders, rallying up into the neckline more or less. That's where I thought it was shortable. I think we talked about this a week or so ago, a couple of weeks ago, um, and it's rolled over, and that's sitting under the 50-day. I'm not so sure I would be attacking it on the short side just yet, but it's definitely one to have on yours. I mean, everything you see here on my screen is pretty much on my short sale watch list. And uh, F5 was shortable the other day at the 200-day. See that? And it comes in. Now you're at these lows. You're undercutting this low. Maybe it's a cover point, but you know you get a five, six points on it. I don't think you can really complain too much if you're playing it on a tactical basis, and and that's really been the way the short side has been working since capitulation Monday. And Red Hat's another one. Uh, you saw the rally. See how it goes through the 200 day on the on capitulation Monday. Rallies back to the 10 day. Could have shorted it there. Rallies back to the 200 day. Could have shorted it there. And every time it breaks down to these lows, it becomes coverable, and it may eventually break to lower lows. So. Biogen just going sideways and uh, similar, but you know I guess get I actually got short this thing on this day here, 
and it was very cooperative and broke down immediately. I think we were actually doing a webinar that day, and uh, I talked about it. Um, Baidu, did I do Gilead? No, Gilead. It's trying to hang in there. So you know, you're starting to see upside volume is is starting to increase over downside volume as the downside volume is drying up in here. So you know, that's stuff to take note of. And it, it tells me at the very least, short, shorting these may be a little bit early. So Baidu is rolling off the 20 day. So if you wanted to try and short at the 20 day, you'd be making some money, about 10 bucks right now. That's not too bad. Uh, but you're coming down towards these lows, and maybe you want to take it. Uh, Illumina is another one I've been watching on the short side, but it's rallying now. And notice how it's it's done this thing where you broke on capitulation Monday. Now you retest on lighter volume, so you get the white copy and retest, as I like to call it. Uh, maybe I should call it the Gilmoian. I don't know. Uh, retest I don't know we'll, we'll have to think about that one uh, but here you go you know you're moving higher and up to the 20 day and the 200 day so you know this may be what heading for the 50 day so think about the possibility that a lot of these broken down leaders and there's so many of them are going to rally a little further into their patterns and so you want to look at where the next points of resistance are and then you want to anticipate it if it coincides like, so let's say you see uh, let's say Apple for example it rallies into its 50-day, and this coincides with the NASDAQ rallying into the 20-day, or the 200-day, I'm sorry, here. Uh, and maybe that all, you know, works in sync, and uh, and that becomes a great short sale point at that, that time. So you want to keep your eyes on how things play out. Right now, all you're seeing here is a little pullback into the 10-day today. The range is pretty tight on the NASDAQ. And how's the volume level today, Dr. K? Are we hopping and bopping? Oh, uh, let me check. Yeah, we're running well below. It's so pretty, it's pretty light, yeah. Yeah, so so see, you're just kind of you're. There's nothing really conclusive here. So, um, somebody's asking about U UA Under Armour. They have some great ads lately. It's it looks like it's trying to come back and held the 50-day, and yeah, so you're starting to see upside volume pick up here and volume drying up on the uh, short side. So. It could be uh, it could be going higher, <clears throat> and you can see you know there's a few of these names that look like they want to go higher, not a huge number, but it, and and this could build. So you know you want to be open to it and not be uh, rigid. So, but I gotta tell you, I just think it's so funny, and I see it. It it goes. It happens every single time. So. Right up near the top when things are starting to show signs of breaking down and you really have to have the courage to get short at that point. Nobody's really that excited about it. But then once it breaks, it's like, wow, everybody comes out of the woodwork. And it's, it's funny how human nature uh, works that way. And even among people who have been longtime subscribers and know very well my feelings about trying to get all excited about shorting once you've had a massive break, which is you, you need to use that crush of liquidity to cover rather than think about starting to get short heavily at that time. But it's interesting how that just happens over and over again. I guess that's why the put call ratio spikes at the lows too, and why IBD goes through marketing correction at the lows as well. So it all works together. Um, conflicted group here, cruise lines. Let's take a look at these. NCLH. Yeah, let's get some good. I'd like to see some good questions on some maybe some long ideas. Maybe that's something we should be looking at just to have something in our back pocket. So see the Dow only down 11 now, so it's turning. So it's noisy out there. Well, aren't you on the edge of a, a big nature preserve there, Dr. K? Yeah, there's a lot of birds and stuff that squawk around. Okay. And, and they're hotty dogs noisy. and they're very loud sometimes. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, fact, that's if, like, if I'm on the phone, if, they, if they're flying overhead, I actually cannot hear the person, what they're, whatever they're saying, because they're, they're that loud. <laughs> okay, so we have Norwegian Cruise Lines uh, looking like a little bit like Isle, I guess. No, maybe a little better. RCL. That's looking okay. CCL. This is interesting. Was everybody going to go on a cruise? That one's not so good, but you can see they're all trying to recover. Dow's now up now, so did I say now twice? Whatever. Uh, Tesla's moving higher. I actually did buy a little bit at like 245.76, it looks like, but I like the way that's acting. Under Armour might be another one to keep an eye on here. 
I like that pullback. I like to buy these voodoo pullbacks. So. <laughs> um, somebody says the market is about human nature. Uh, no, it's not. It's about people buying stocks and selling stocks. So, you mean human psychology? Uh, let's see. LCI, that was one that was on my uh, list last night. Yeah, so you're picking the same names up. You must be using HGS Investor because I think that came through on it on HGS Investor screens last night. The stocks moving to the upside screen, which is a canned screen on that system, is actually a very good one. And I can tell you that some of my best ideas have come right off of that list. Uh, anyways, let's see. JetBlue is also acting pretty well, and I've been wondering whether that means some of the other airlines, because you're seeing uh, American trying to set up, Love is uh, trying to trying to come back, you know, but it's stuck under the 200-day line, so you know, I don't know. There, it's kind of an iffy group. I, I like the stuff I'm looking at better. So, anyways, let's see. Um, anything else? I like this one. So the broker friend of mine is bragging to me about this one. I guess he bought it here or something and or bought it for his clients here. And I told him you better take your profits on this at some point because uh, this is the risk in biotechs. First hand, big break on news and uh, everything that, that you made and more just disappears. So well, turning back to the downside. Oh, well, so much for that rally. Um, anything else? Any other exciting questions? Come on, you guys. I know you got some good ones. <clears throat> I guess not. Did we talk about EPAM? Yeah, coming back up. Paycom, trying to hang in tight. That's looking kind of interesting. Had a big breakout or tried to break out when the market started to get in some trouble and came got hit and it's held in tight so maybe that's going to head higher that's another one to look at so I got that on my list um, as long as we're looking at stocks with com at the end we could also look at uh, Dex Dexcom so Paycom and Dexcom maybe the com is the uh, new theme here. But uh, you've got a uh, pocket pivot here off the 10-day line. It pulled back a little bit this morning, uh, and it's holding up. So it looks okay. What else? What else? Uh, let's look at some old names. I was looking at uh, Solar Edge, wondering what's going on there. It's, it, I mean, this thing got washed out, too. Look at that. Stalling around the 10-week line, the 50-day 50, 50 line on the daily, I'm not so sure. First solar was on fire a little while ago, but it's kind of been a flame out. And, uh, yeah, we had this gap up, broke down, nothing going on there. Just check the solar group. Sun power is still looking pretty grim. So nothing really exciting in that that area. Uh, Ulta, Ulta Salons, I think my daughter buys stuff from there all the time. Um, yeah, her room, she's a teenager. Her room smells like a freaking flower stand or something. Um, when I go by, there's like a cloud of fragrance coming out of that place. Um, anybody who has a teenage daughter maybe knows what I'm talking about. As opposed to having a teenage son, which when you go by their room, you get the strong odor of a, of a gymnasium locker room, which uh, interesting the dichotomy there. Um, But the, it's just the same thing, I think, here. Uh, you're trying to hold a long line. You had a little more selling, so the volume on the upside hasn't been so great. But you're seeing these sorts of uh, what I would call comeback-type patterns, and they're patterns that you've seen before in the QE market. So I think you have to be attuned to these and know where they lie uh, and be ready to play them if you need to. So without thinking that every rally is a short and you're going to make a pile of money, after missing the big October or August break, so maybe you will later on. And, you know, kind of like 20, uh, 2007, the break off the peak. Let's go back through that just to uh, kind of talk about how bear markets develop. And I talk about this uh, in the uh, new book. So you can see here, if we go, 
you have the first break off the peak, and you chop sideways. And I remember early January you had another break, and uh, and then you chop sideways for a longer period of time. And there were chances to make money on the long side and the short side on the long side, and then finally a huge break to the downside. Notice how each wave to the downside is bigger than the last. So you might be looking for another wave to the downside in a couple of months. And that's what it took here after the break off the peak in October. And, and during this period, actually, if you go look at... Uh, Pull up this. If we look at Apple, for example, whoops, it's better not change on me. Well, we'll just do this. Yeah, somebody's uh, agreeing with me. You've got twin girls turning 14. Oh, you're lucky. Uh, two boys who are in their 20s now. Okay, so you know the drill. You know, you know how it goes. Um, okay, so let's look at Apple. <clears throat> Back in 2007, a lot of nutty stuff has happened since then, hasn't it? Uh, you actually saw, see, the market topped in October 2007 here, and Apple broke down with it, and then it went to new highs. Okay, so I kind of wonder if you're going to see names like uh, Facebook do something like that now. You know, so the market chops sideways for the next several weeks, and you'll see names like Facebook go to new highs, maybe even Apple again. I don't know. So that's something I've been thinking about as a possibility. So um, Somebody says, Gil, I love you. You are like the soup Nazi. I'm the market Nazi, actually. Um, Yeah, I, I was telling someone I, I contacted Donald Trump the other day, and I think his use of the word stupid is highly unprofessional. I, I prefer the word moron, which I think is a little more sophisticated, but that's just me. Um, yes, I, I know, Sam. I, I used to watch Seinfeld, too. This, that's where the whole thing comes from, the soup Nazi routine. No soup for you. Um, somebody says, thanks for all your help. You're welcome. Uh, how's Dr. K's VIX index doing recently? I don't know. Ask Dr. K. Dr. K, you got an answer for that one? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's you know, let's see how the beta, how the beta unfolds. Um, but so far, it's, you know, the market has not been, um, I mean, when it's, when it's choppy and sloppy like it is, actually, there are more profit opportunities for the model. So let's see how this, uh, this correction unwinds. Um, and, and I'm, I'm very curious myself, but yeah, we'll see. Um, and the type of markets it, it, where it, apparently it still, you know, has, it has been profitable this year, but the type of markets that uh, are the are the most unkind are the ones that are so manipulated that you know the, the market just doesn't go anywhere. It just you have these shallow floors, and so there's no real, where there's minimal profit opportunity on the downside in, in those cases. But right. uh, yeah, so far so far as expected. Yeah, and you can check it on the website, I suppose. Uh, what are you guys going to update the first book from 2010? Not really sure. I just finished writing a book on short selling. I kind of want to take a break from writing books. Maybe at some point in the not too distant future. Maybe if when Wiley bugs us to do it. I don't know. Right? I mean, a lot of that stuff, I don't really see it as needing to be all that updated. What I would probably do is just do a new book and discuss some of the, you know, corollary type uh, techniques that we developed uh, based around the pocket pivots and how things have evolved in the current market and you know the voodoo pullbacks and stuff like that so I mean that's a possibility somebody's asking uh, are you going to have these on Fridays or go back to Thursdays uh, I don't know do you like who likes Fridays you like Fridays better than Thursdays I think it's mostly a function of our schedules, and like if I want to focus on trading, I don't want to be busy doing a webinar. So, and I'm, right now I'm not aggressively shorting. Yeah, it's market. It's really market dependent. Yeah. So I, you know, I've got a few lo light long positions. We'll see how they pan out. But I'm generally not, uh, you know, willing to do a webinar when I'm busy, really busy, or if I think I'm going to be. Sometimes it doesn't work that way. But if you like Fridays, uh, some people like Saturdays. Some people like there's I mean I think we'll do them we do them we'll try to mix it up but generally it's kind of the end of the week is how it works out so but we, we reserve the right to change that without 
uh, prior notice. So, well, you will get a prior notice, but um, anyways. Somebody says, what is the best format to get your book in electric format? Does not, does anyone, wait, does anyone sell PDFs to the books? Um, no. Someone wants uh, webinars every day. I like that one. That's a demanding person for you. Um, I love the HSI stock hunting webinar. Well, maybe we'll do one of those, but I'm not seeing a lot to hunt for on the long side. It would be a short one. But I could always do that, and we'll see how this market goes. But you, you kind of get a sense of what I'm talking about, what you might have happened. you got to be open to all these possibilities. So somebody says, I don't care when you do the webinar, just so you do them. Okay. I Yeah, sure. And I think there's always something to say. There are always opportunities out there. So you've got some sense of what I'm looking at on the long side and, and how I'm looking at it, given how we might look at uh, how prior markets panned out. I don't think you're going to break down like you did in March of 2000. And it, I don't get the sense that it's going to be like May of 2010 either. It may be more like 2007, even uh, if, in fact, we are going to break down to lower lows and blow apart, So, which to me is not necessarily clear. Anyways, uh, any more questions before we sign off? Somebody says, let's see. They are really good whenever they are. I'm really learning a lot. You're making me think for myself. Now I can't stand listening to anyone for the first time. I understand. Trade what you see. Uh, that's good. Good to hear, Sam. Um, Let's see. I noticed the 65 moving average and 100. Okay, I think you're talking about. I use the 65 day exponential and the 150 day simple myself, and I've talked about that before. So yeah, I'm, I think they're useful. Markets uh, Dow's turning up 19 points. See, they're, they're going to take it higher. What they're doing, they start to bring it in. It looks like, and they want to drag in some shorts and then run them in, and that seems to be what goes on here. So. I think you're just seeing that pattern. And that's a typical pattern for a choppy sideways range following a big break like we had on capitulation Monday. So I think my theory about where we're going and for how some of these stocks may play out over the next few days or weeks, um, I think it's worth maybe worth a shot. So recall I'm, I'm comparing what Apple did after the peak in 2007, October 2007. It turned around and it went back to the upside. <clears throat> probably faster I zip this way yeah here we go remember you here's your market top you break see how ugly that looks but it turns around and breaks out to new highs maybe Facebook could do that now that's a possibility maybe a couple of these other uh, leading stocks I think first solar might have been similar at the time let's go back um, yeah same thing actually it, it it corrected. Here's the top in late late October 2007 right here. Try to make this a little bit bigger. Whoops, what happened? Here we go, yeah. So let's go back to, here's the, here's actually where the market peaked and it came in, but then it just continued and went higher. <laughs> How's that? Somebody just said NCLH. Uh, we just talked about that. It's like the, the whole... It's just hanging up here like the rest of the cruise line. So I, personally, I think that it would be the big stocks that will move to the upside. I'm actually seeing Tesla move up. I got a buck on it now. Woohoo! Let's party. Um, anyways, oh, wrong window. Paul. Okay, he was going to type that into his uh, quote screen, I guess. But uh, you're seeing some of these hang in there. I, this kind of, I think. Okay, here, here's my call. I like UA. I like Palo Alto Networks. I think Facebook might go higher. It may be worth a shot. You use a 10-day line, which is pretty close as a stop, or the 20-day line, which is even closer. Uh, I would like to see it get back above the 50-day today and turn positive. That would be very constructive. Tesla. Uh, I have a little bit of this. I like to pull back. Like UA, I like to pull back into the lines here on light volume. And you're running very light volume. So, And it's turned off the lows. So all of you go and buy it and push it up for me, okay? Um, you know, maybe the plant... Planet Fitness <clears throat> uh, goes higher. I don't know. I'll tell you what I've been buying while we've been doing this, and the stocks pull back. I own Paul Alter Networks, Facebook, and Tesla right now. Um, 
and they're starting to turn and make some money for me. So we'll see what happens. But it's all touch and go at this point. I don't know. But I think yeah, hopefully you guys have a pretty good sense of what I'm looking at in terms of the macro picture and where we are within the context of where we've been and how other markets work out uh, when you have the initial break off the peak, if in fact we are going into a longer term correction or bear market, which you don't know right now. And I'm going to emphasize that nobody knows, nobody ever knows what a, a bear market is going to be like when it starts. You know, I remember, do you, maybe you remember this too, Dr. K, in June, in fact, you were with me. We were on the floor. We were having breakfast at the New York Stock Exchange on June 2nd, year 2000. And we're sitting there with the two guys, Steve and Louie, uh, having breakfast. And the jobs number comes out. And whatever it was, I forget what it was, but it was very favorable. And all of a sudden, the futures are rocketing. And the guys had to leave and go down to the floor to get ready for the deluge of orders that were going to hit them once the bell uh, rung. And so we were sitting there. We finished our breakfast, and we all headed down. And do you remember this, Dr. K? When, when the bell, when the opening bell hit, that suddenly there was this huge roar on the floor. And we were running around, and we were buying stocks for clients. We were running around with our, our guys on the floor, and we were even doing some trades ourselves, uh, buying stocks, but I remember that was the day I remember going in to buy, uh, I think it was Nokia, and I went in there with uh, Lou Solcenti, who was one of our floor brokers, and we go up to the crowd, and there's a crowd around Nokia, and there's a bunch of brokers, and the stock's bidding like, you know, 17 teenies by 9 teenies. A teeny is a 16th. That was back in the days when stocks traded in fractions. No, they really did uh, do that at one time. I tell that to my kids who I think that's kind of quaint, but in any case, uh, I remember there was a bunch of brokers, and they were bidding underneath the market trying to get stock, and this guy from DLJ, Donaldson, Lufkin, Genrat, comes in, and Louis, and I was going to go, and I wanted to buy 50000 and Louis says, no, 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 wait, wait, and uh, he says, watch this guy over here. So this guy from DLJ comes in, and he suddenly takes uh, 100000 or 50000 75000 something like some big amount at the offer. And at that point, all of the other uh, brokers who were in the crowd, they were suddenly put in a position of having to take stock or get left behind. So they all jumped in to start buying stock. And as they're bidding it up, he turns around and he just goes, sold, 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 sold. And the guy unloaded like half a million shares after knocking it up with about 50 to 100,000. That was very interesting to see. But I remember that day. And you remember, Dr. K, it was a follow-through day, and Bill O'Neill was saying that it was like uh, October 1962, and we were starting a new bull run, and blah, blah, blah. You remember that, Dr. Right, K? Right, right. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah, and that was what an happened? Day. And what happened after that? Like, in September, we rolled over and made lower lows. So my whole point is that nobody knows exactly when a bear market starts, how long it's going to last, how bad it's going to be, and we don't know any more about this current market, where it's going from here, uh, than we ever did in the past. I mean, everything's nice in hindsight, but nobody knows, and everybody can babble all they want about what they think they know, and and in the end, uh, it's just watching the stocks, I think, that tells you everything you need to know. Anyways, on that note, hopefully uh, you guys got something out of this webinar, and we'll catch you all next week. Have a great weekend, okay? Take care, everyone.